Mathematics. 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 Mathematics to do Welcome back. It's still Emmanuel Johnny, your video mathematics tutor. Now we want to look at types of number. And if you look at these types of number here, it's something you would have done or you know right from your junior secondary school, even up to senior secondary school. So for the purpose of this video, I will not waste time in explaining these numbers. But I'm going to do a kind of a video for this. But just like I said, if you understand this, it will help us to transform sets from set builder's form to what we call a listed form of sets. I will not waste time here, but I will just take a little time to explain the last four, one, two, three, four. And then the, these inequalities, there is just a little concept I want to borrow as it will help us also in listing uh, elements of a set, the natural and so on. So let's get started quickly. I'll run through them. Now, when we talk about natural numbers in mathematics, we say it is represented as this, natural numbers. And when we talk about set of natural numbers, it begins from one. They are just counting numbers. So the first natural number is one. And the last natural number is not known. So till infinity. So natural numbers begins from one and ends at infinity, keeps going. In other words, when you talk about natural numbers, they are positive numbers. There is nothing like zero, no negative number. They are all positive. Then when we want to look at the type of number or set of number that also involve zero, then we talk about whole numbers. So all numbers between, begins from zero, one, two, till infinity. So the only difference between a whole number, W, and natural number is that the whole number begins from zero. The natural number begins from one. So you can agree with me that whole number is bigger than natural number. This one starts from zero, then one, two, but this one starts from one. Then when you now talk about a type of number that involves zero, positive numbers, and also negative numbers, that's when we talk about integers. So integers mathematically is always something like this, z. And it is negative say minus two minus one zero one two and so on and so forth so in integer you can find zero you can find negative numbers you can find positive numbers till infinity that is what integers are another thing is that in integer there is no fraction no decimal fraction no fraction of any form every number must be whole number like minus two minus one zero one two three and so on and so forth okay so when we talk about rational numbers um we normally use the letter q to represent natural i mean rational numbers any number that can be expressed in the form a over b is called a rational number so meaning that if a number cannot be expressed in the form a over b then it becomes an irrational number Okay, so a set of um, rational numbers are maybe like 1 over 2, 1 on number 1 over 3, 5, 7, maybe 2.5, and so on and so forth. Is 5, 7, 2, I mean 5 and 7, are they rational numbers? Remember we say that a number must be in the form A over B for it to be called a rational number. So why is 5 a rational number? Or why is 7 a rational number? Why is minus 3 a rational number? That is because 5 can be written as 5 over 1. 7 can be written as 7 over 1. Minus 3 can be written as minus 3 over 1. Hence, they are also called uh, rational. They can also be expressed in terms of this. Hence, they are also rational numbers. Which means that all natural numbers, whole numbers, integers can also be expressed as rational numbers okay complex number note a number if it is not a rational number becomes an irrational number like i said i won't waste time to explain that i'll do a video for that okay when we talk about complex number and let's look at complex number if i have a plus i b 
This number is a complex number. Where A here is a real number, B here is also a real number. Okay, we also have what we call real number. It falls somewhere here. Real number. Real number takes care of everything. In other words, in a real number, you can find natural number, you can find a whole number, you can find an integer, you can find rational, irrational. So a real number is always in this form, R. So every type of number here is under real number, which is a bigger set of number. But for complex, it is in this form, which is even bigger than every other number, this complex. What makes it bigger is that it has a letter here, I. With this I here is what we call the imaginary or the complex number. So I can have something like 2 plus I 3 or 2 plus 3 I. So this is the real number part. This is the complex part. Okay, like I said, I will not waste time there. Anytime you see a number in the form A plus IB, then this is a complex number. So mathematically, something like this. Complex number is always given in this form. So this is a complex A plus IB. I'll do more on this when I'm dealing with the video. So for this topic set, the area that is most important to us is just 1, 2, 3, and of course from 7 to 10. So let me quickly explain 7 to 10 as it will help us in this topic set. We already know what even numbers are. We say that even numbers are numbers that are uh, divisible by 2. You know when we say it's divisible by, that means there is no remainder, or you can say the remainder is 0. Okay. So we know that even number starts from 2. Okay, so even number E is always a set of number that begins from 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. Okay, so we say even numbers are numbers that are divisible by 2. 2 is divided by 2. 4 can be divided by 2. 6 can be divided by 2. So it keeps going like that. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 and so on. Whereas, odd numbers are numbers that when divided by 2, there is always a remainder. For instance, if you have a number, odd number, then the first odd number is 1. Okay? The next odd number is 3. We know. Because these numbers, when divided by 2, there's always a remainder. The next one is 5. Next 7, 9, 11. You know, add 2 here, 13. Add 2 here, 15. And so on and so forth. So these are odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, and so on and so forth. Okay. What then are prime numbers? Prime numbers are numbers that can be divided by only one and itself. In other words, a number is qualified to be a prime number if it can be divided by one and itself. For instance, uh, I do ask, is 1 a prime number? Some students will say yes, some students will say no. But I don't want to waste time on that. Please note that 1 is not a prime number. Because 1 has only one factor which is just itself. And we say that a number is qualified to be a prime number if it can be divided by two numbers. In other words, it must have two factors, one and itself. So, one is not a prime number because it has only one factor. So, therefore, the first prime number is two. But two is also a number which is an even number. So, the number two is the only number in the whole world that exists both as an even number and a prime number. So, the number 2 can only be divided by 1 and itself. There is no other number in this life that can divide 2 without a remainder except 1 and itself. Hence, the first prime number is 2. Okay, next is 3, 5, 7. You cannot say that 9 is a prime number. Why? Because 9 has more than 2 factors like 1. Can divide 9, 3 can divide 9, 9 can divide itself. So there are all the three factors there. So you cannot say that 9 
is a prime number. Hence, it is out of the list. Okay, 9 is not. 11, 13, 17, 19, and so on. That is prime numbers from 1 to 20 ends at 19. Okay, sir, so if 9 is not a prime number, is there any name we can give to 9 since it is not a prime number? In other words, it has more than two factors. Please note, mathematically, any number that has more than two factors, then that number is called a composite number. Composite number. Okay? So that means that 9 is a composite number. 4 is a composite number. Why? It has more than two factors. 1 can go, 2 can go, 4 can go. So, any number that has more than two factors is called a composite number. Alright, we continue. So, we now know what prime numbers are. A prime numbers are numbers that can only be divided by two numbers, which is 1 and itself. Note also that 1 is not a prime number because it has only one factor. Note also that 2 is the only number that exists both as an even number and as a prime number. Okay, so let's look at prime factors. For prime factors, let's... If I write a number like this, 4, and I ask, what are the factors of 4? In other words, the factors of a number are numbers that can divide a particular number without a remainder. So 1 is a factor of 4. Why? Because it can divide 4 without a remainder. 2 is a factor of 4. Why? Because 2 can divide 4 without a remainder. 4 can also divide 4 without a remainder. Therefore, all these are factors of 4. So now, if I am writing a number, say 12, and I want to find the factors of 12, that means I'm looking for those numbers that can divide 12 without a remainder. And the numbers are 1, 2 can divide 12, 3 can divide 12 without a remainder, 4 can divide 12, 6 can divide 12, and also, 12 can divide 12 without a remainder. Therefore, all these are factors of 12. But the question now is, of all these factors of 12, which of these numbers are prime numbers? So you will agree with me that 2 is a prime number. 3 is a prime number. Aside 2 and 3, is there any other prime number here? No. So therefore, only 2 and 3 are prime numbers from this set of numbers. Now, but 2 is also a factor of 12. 3 is also a factor of 12. But just that they are prime numbers. So we say that 2 and 3 are prime factors of 12. That means that if I'm looking for even factors of 12, there will be 2, 4, 6, 12. If I'm looking for odd factors of 12, I'll go for 1, 3, 1 and 3 are odd factors of 12. But since I'm interested in the prime factors, then it is 2 and 3. So prime factors of a number are prime factors are factors of a number that are prime numbers. They are factors of this number, but they are prime numbers. Alright, so whenever you see a set of numbers, you are looking for the prime numbers. You must know what a prime number is to be able to generate the prime factors. Okay, so all this, like I said, will help us when you are listing the elements of a set. Now, let's look at the concept of inequality as it will also help us in listing the elements of a set.